Hello. So, should be live and I'm just gonna check because I don't have any comments at all for some reason. Okay. Right, that's fine. We are live. And I've got volume. So, hi everybody. Um, I am Claire, and I, if you come to shows, you will see me at the shows. Um, please say hi. Let me know that you're there. I can see a few people are watching. Now, I get asked all the time about tie dyeing and how difficult it is. So, I wanted to kick off our first lot of Facebook lives with uh, tie dyeing because it's so easy and it's so simple. Now, what you need is you need um, a big bucket, a really big bucket. This is a uh, Wilkinson's special and it is a massive mixing bowl. And I saw it and I thought I'd cook cakes with it, but uh, I'm not a cook, so that kind of didn't happen. Um, it was really, really inexpensive. It was two pounds. So this is now my soda ash bath bucket. And one thing I will say about dye is when you're using Procyon dye, anything that you use for the dye, don't use it for food. Uh, really, really simple. So what you want to do is decide what fabric you're using. And I have two different types of cotton here. This cotton I got from the Fabworks Mill Shop. Hi, Linda. Oh, so glad you use our dyes. That's brilliant. So this cotton is great. It was £2.50 a metre. It's from the Fabworks Mill Shop in, um, I think it's Wakefield. It's quite close. I, I just pop over and get it. It's really, really good, strong cotton. Really like it. And because I wanted to share with you that you don't have to use brand new cotton, this cotton is an old bed sheet. And it's um, a bit bobbly, as you can see, and a bit fluffy and a bit discoloured because it's been well used and well loved. It was my favourite bed sheet, but then we got a new bed and it didn't fit. So it has been used for dye. Now, what I've done is I have cut it up into manageable size squares and lengths because we are going to be doing some tying and it's easier with I find it easier to share and on this little screen to do little squares so this is nice and I had to pre-soak this because you do need to pre-soak oh hang on let me get the towel you do need to pre-soak your cotton now procyon dye works best with cotton and the purer the cotton the better and what we need to do with it is wash it before we dye it and we call it dye clean it needs to be perfectly clean so basically you want to wash it in washing powder only no fabric condition and nothing else added just the washing powder that's it as simple as that if you use i'm just going to move this out of the way but if you use pure cotton, you can get some absolutely amazing colours. Oh, that's really washed my camera out. That is the magenta. I'll bring it back in a second. 
this one is the really really nice yellow and then we've got some of the nice blues and yellows and greens so if you use pure cotton 100% cotton these are the kind of vibrances of the colors that you're going to get if you use a mixture this one was a test one i did and this one was polyester cotton and the poly cotton you can see is very very different these are the same colors but they come out extremely differently this one is really really pale and the dye came from the same bottle so this is poly cotton and this was a um, pillowcase i think so you don't have to use brand new stuff just use what you've got and this one is actually i think it was a lilac pillowcase to be honest but you can see the stitching was actually cotton so it's taken the dye really well <laughs> so just remember the higher the cotton content the better the design that you're going to get I love that one. That one came out really cool. Right. So gloves on. And always wear gloves when you are working with dye. Now these gloves, I did ask my friend who is a nurse if she wanted my stash of workshop gloves because they are proper PPE. And she declined because they are kept in my workshop boxes with other chemicals. So normally, in other circumstances these kind of gloves are fine but any kind of gloves you could use your kitchen gloves your washing up gloves any kind of gloves but PPE works fine if you can get it but if you can't get it and you haven't given yours away then use washing up gloves but don't use the washing up gloves then in your washing when you're washing your pots and pans okay oh that's my cat coming in hello Anna. So to set up your bowl and your mixture, we have wonderful infrastructure sheets, absolutely wonderful instruction sheets. Hi Alison, I am using these Procyon MX die. And a, we have actually a resource on our website. If you go to the website, the Colour Craft, have I got the website address on here? So I can show you. It's colourcraftlimited.com. Oh, you're not going to, oh yeah, you can see it. So if you go to the website, colourcraftlimited.com, if you go right down to the bottom and scroll right down, there is actually a little bar that says um, instruction sheets. And you can download and print off all the instruction sheets for anything that you need to know. And we've got loads. There is a tie dyeing one. This one I pulled out of my workshop box so you can see all the detail it tells you absolutely everything that you need to know so what i've done i have mixed in this bowl this one i've mixed up the fixer procyon dye fixer and procyon dye fixer is soda ash and soda ash is fine you don't need to use gloves with soda ash um, it's not a dangerous product it can give you a reaction if you have like eczema or psoriasis or anything but don't worry about it too much because it is like a cleaning product soda ash so don't be too worried about soda ash when you're touching dye always use gloves but when you're touching your soda ash I'm not too bothered I have seen some people use barrier cream like this uh, sorry I just have to remove my cat from my fish tank because he's decided that that's where he wants to go right while I'm live streaming you're gonna get stuck water sorry about that this is a uh, because I'm not in my usual area I'm sat in a different room <laughs> Yeah, I'm not giving the cats any attention, so fish tank it is for them. <laughs> so, Prussian Dye Fixer um, is soda ash, and what I've done is I have mixed, um, you go by weight of your fabric, and for every 100 grams of your dry fabric, you want to have roughly about 20 grams 
of your fixative. So when I weighed all of this fabric, it weighed just under 300 grams. So I put three roughly level tablespoons and um, tablespoon if you've got um if i go i got to a pound shop and i got some colored mixes so it's, you know measuring spoons so i knew exactly you know that color if it's pink it goes it's for not for food so i went and got some of them and um if you weigh it roughly a level tablespoon is roughly 20 grams of Procyon Dye Fixer. So I put three level tablespoons in here and a little bit extra for good luck. And then I filled it up with uh, six liters of water. So 100 grams of fabric, 20 grams of fixative, two liters of water. That's your ratio. Basically, whatever your fabric is, double it, put it in, and that's the easiest way to remember it. Now, this has been soaking for about half an hour, so it's actually all ready to come out now. So what I'm going to do is grab some out and give it a squeeze up. Give it a nice hearty rinse, and then that's it. We are ready to use this can be left to dry and it can be left to dry overnight and you could come back in three months time and dye it or you can just use it straight away it's up to you but just make sure it's well rinsed out so I'm gonna get a couple oh I'm gonna move my dye out of the way and I'm gonna rinse a few out I'll probably do most of these off camera on the dyeing, but I'm going to, because you don't want to see me dye 30 bits and tie 30 bits, because that would be a, an all afternoon show, and I do really want to keep it to an hour, so I don't want to bore you too much. So this one is the really, really nice... Bed sheet, and I cut that one into squares and I also do do these as workshops as well so when we're all back up and running if you've got a group or a class and you're still too scared to do some dyeing on your own then give us a ring and we will hook you up So now the cat's going under my feet. This is going to be interesting. I did shut the door and I thought I'd lock them out, but there we go. So if you hear strange rustling noises, I do actually have a bin next to me and he's in the bin. Don't you just love cats? Okay, so that should be enough. Well, I don't know what you're doing. So these are the long strips that I did, and that was out of that really, really nice cotton that was from the Fabworks mill shop. And I did check because I wanted to make sure that you'd be able to get the stuff if you fancy having a go. The Fabworks mill shop is open and delivering, and we are... As a company, all the staff are not in, um, but the directors are in sending orders. So if you do want any of the Procyon dye, we do have a beautiful starter kit, you can get it. And we are delivering. We've got some beautiful colors, absolutely beautiful colors. Now, I'm gonna take my gloves off. Um, tie dyeing with acid dye. Acid dye is for wool. Um, I've never used the acid dye with cotton. It is mainly for hair. So really I don't think that it would fix because it is a different purpose. But this 
you could do i don't i've never seen anybody do tie dyeing with wool but you know maybe it'll work try it and see if it does let us know one of our customers the other day uh, sent me a photo of the brand new uh, fluorescent wool dye in the acid dye range and it actually glows under black light which we never knew so that is fantastic isn't it uh, if you have a look on the information sheet that you can download, that's what you use the Procyon dye on. Cotton, calico, silk, linen, viscose, rayon, flax, hemp, works on paper. And on cotton polyester mixes, it is a lighter shade. Hi, Erica. Oh, from the Netherlands. Do you get our dye in the Netherlands? Hope so. Right. On to the tying. This is my favourite part. I love tying and I've got two favourites and one of them creates a swirly sun, um, which was, have I got one here? Yeah, that one. So I'm going to show you how to get this swirl. And then the other one is a fold, which if you've been to one of our shows, the fold is actually on the flags that are usually above the stand. Everyone knows this for our flags because they are so cool. So, I like to use um, this cheap plasticky type string works really well because it is it won't soak up the dye and spread the dye where you don't want it to be i got that really cheaply from a garden center right, i'm gonna work on the square one first so i did four square ones and these are just damp now just gonna give it an extra ring out just in case yep that's fine now, to do the swirly pattern, really, really simple. I oh, just need a pair of scissors for my string. You can use elastic bands too. And I do have some elastic bands, but my elastic bands appear to be really old. And apparently, which I didn't realise, that elastic bands, when they get really old, go really brittle and snap. Oh, some of the bottom ones aren't so bad. But the top one, you can see that one, that's just falling apart and that's not gonna whoop, hold so rubber bands you want to check them before you use them <laughs> that's why i like string because it doesn't go old and snap so to do the swirl really really easy i'm gonna grab in the center like that and then i'm gonna put my hand roughly on it and hold it and i'm gonna twist can you see what action is happening isn't the best angle but I had to change desks at the last minute because my camera wouldn't work on my surface so that's why I was a couple of minutes late I thought it would work but now as I'm spinning I'm just holding it tight and then we have this looks like a beautiful rosette flower and this is the point in which you want to elastic band it. Ooh. And the tighter your band, the more white space you get, which is another thing that I get asked all the time, is then you're not getting the white space on your tie dye, but you want white space. That's because, oh, you've not tied your bands or your string tight enough so i'm going to do a couple with bands and i'm going to do a couple with string and when we open them which will be tomorrow then you will see what the difference is between bands and string so are you following with me you ready i'm going to do it again this square isn't square so i mustn't have cut it out very square it goes a bit squiff I think I must have been using my roller wrong. So it just had a coffee. So again, we're pinching in the middle like that. 
put your other hand on to support it and grab and twist and you can see if it's going off kilter or if it's lying nicely uh, honey could you get me the big green bucket out of the bath i forgot it i forgot my dye bucket <laughs> so going to oh fell apart this is why i don't like using the elastic bands because it falls apart so squidge and twist I did this one in um, a workshop with the Embroiders Guild in, um, I think it was uh, it was one of the L Lancashire ones, I think it was the Ribble one, and they had a great time doing this one. Ooh. There we go. Thank you. Now, I'm going to move on to this strip and I'm going to do the zigzag one. So, if you have got a square, I'll show you on this one. I'm not going to tie this one, but I'm going to show you on this one. If you've got a square, you can make a really cool zigzag by roughly an inch and pinch and pinch and pinch and pinch. Can you see how it's gathering? And it gathers in this beautiful zigzag. And you get this beautiful pattern. It's got cat hair everywhere. We've got a long haired cat that we've just taken on and his hair is everywhere. And then if you fold it and tie it in several places, actually, let's just do it because you know what? This is beautiful. I've got loads to go out this afternoon, so. Yeah, remember, the tighter you do it, the more white space you're going to get. So tie it like your life depends on it. I'm going to give that a really, really good tight wrap. And then I'm going to go further down and give it a really, really good tight wrap. So I've done loosely around there just to move my string. I'm not disconnecting my string. And then just tie it however. It does have a name, this kind of knot. I'm not sure what it is. It's some kind of bursting knot. I'll remember one day what it's called. I'm not a boater. And that one was going to come out like our flags do. So if you've seen the flags at the shows, um, I don't actually have them here, obviously, because I'm at home. So I'm pretty much, um, I can't show you the example. But if I find a picture, I will show you tomorrow. But that's the tie for doing the flags. So onto this one. I'm just going to double check it's ringed out enough. Yep, there's no water left in there. Oh, 20 views. Tell us where you are. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Got colour craft friends all over the world. So let us know where you're watching from. How are your days going? What you're up to? Anything good? Have you tried tie dyeing before? Are you a bit nervous about tie dyeing? Because don't be, because it is awesome. 
Uh, this project I'm going to turn into, once we've finished, I'm actually going to turn it into a reusable shopping bag. And so the dimensions of the squares that I've done are roughly, oh, don't break on me, don't break. Oh, didn't like that. Focus. Let me just get a piece of paper to focus it. Oh, uh, what's going on with the camera now? There we go. Come back. Come back. Got it. Always good to have a bit of paper in between. So yeah, we've got um, people all over the world that like to die. Uh, are you too scared to die? You know, let me know. Remember, tight elastic. And don't cut the circulation off in the tips of your fingers. Well, you're doing it. Oh, are you here because you like brush art? And we will be doing a brush art show. We'll be doing some paper crafting shows as well. Uh, lots of people are doing brush art shows on Facebook Lives. So I figured I'd start with dye rather than brush art. I have been asked for a brush art spray show which that's really exciting because our brush or sprays are an acrylic based spray and they are great absolutely great so this one i'm going to do in a triangle and this is one of the ties that i do in the workshop so basically you triangle and then triangle and then triangle and people always say to me, tie dyeing is really hard, but I mean, how hard is this? <laughs> I'm really in a triangle. Don't be scared. The first time when I, when I started working for Colorcraft, I was given the starter set and told to go and play. And I was told nothing other than just go and do. So if I can learn it from the starter set, then so can you, because it is really simple. All you have to do really is uh, decide what kind of tie you want to do and um, watch a tutorial on how to do it. And that's exactly how I did it. There is a guy who is really hard to remember. His name is the tie dye guy and he does the most amazing ties. Absolutely amazing. So I've just folded that into a smaller one. And I'm going to put two bands on. One here and one on the other side. And the tie-dye guy, he does um, t-shirts and sheets and mainly t-shirts really. But he does the coolest ties and he does really, really intricate patterns and all sorts. He's so cool really 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 easy so it's just the tie-dye guy he's on youtube oh that one's gonna come out nice i can feel it and so we're half an hour into tying and going through dye any more questions about dye because i'm gonna start dyeing very shortly and going through the actual dye rather than the preparation and the preparation if you haven't uh, this one I'm just going to do random, so I'm just going to grab it and wrap it. If you uh, missed the beginning, uh, you need to use cotton and you need to prepare and soak your fabric in soda ash. Oh, left my tail a bit short on that one. So soda ash is your fixative. If you don't use soda ash, your dye will not fix. 
and you can work wet or dry with soda ash. Oh, my chat didn't scroll up. I just scrolled it up. So, oh, Gina from Caffilly, but you're from Sheffield. Oh, awesome. So you're in Caffilly, but you're from Sheffield. That's a shame. You could have just popped in. Well, not yet, but once we're back open, you could just pop in. Uh, Joe. Hi, Joe. You're from Oxen. That's amazing. I love it down in Oxen. It's beautiful. I am very lucky that I get to travel and I go and work all over. So I'm very lucky. I do find... And I do appreciate and find, think that I am privileged in what I do for a living. Although being creative is hard. It really is hard. Oh, cool, Alison. You're a brush of fan, but you want to try dye. And remember, you can use your Procyon dye on paper. So it does work on paper. Um, I think one of our beautiful friends, um, Hilary B does it on paper. Uh, I'm not sure what dye she uses, but I usually see her at shows and that's starting to look a bit red. <laughs> um, I do see her at shows a lot and she is a lovely lady and she does loads of stuff for Procyon dyeing and she oh. remember tie it for your life because otherwise you won't get white space. Um, does anybody go to shows? Are you missing your shows? I sure am. I should have been at Harrogate's this, was, was it Harrogate this weekend? Yeah, it should have, it would have been Harrogate this weekend at the convention centre. It would have been Stamparama and I would have been doing brush show with the lovely Kim at Crafty Roo and Chris, of course. I'm not saying Chris is lovely though. I'm only joking, he is. So you will have seen me around at shows. Although next season, you might not recognise me because I'm planning on having uh, green hair, not quite this green, but I'm planning on uh, having turquoise hair because turquoise is one of my favourite colours. Oh, my hand is a bit too wet. I've got my apron on. Do protect your clothing and do protect your work area when you are using dye. And um, I did have a lady who said to me that uh, she asked me how to get dye, Procyon dye. It wasn't our dye, it was a different brand. And she asked me how to get it out of granite. And um, Pretty much no chance getting dye out of granite and she had a lovely granite work, work surfaces that she did tie dyeing on and she got the Procyon dye on the granite. The only way you're going to get that out is grind it out. So make sure you have got proper table coverings when you're doing dye. Now I've got loads left, absolutely loads left and I'm going to do these this afternoon and do a big reveal tomorrow but I'm not going to do all of these now. What colours in the beginner set, Alison? I will show you in a second. Uh, so I'm going to do these this afternoon, but I am going to show you how we dye these. And I'm going to move on to the actual dye rather than the tie, which I think is probably the most interesting bit. You can find ties, different way to tie online. There is a million websites with a million patterns. Oh, you came to the Wool Monte. Yeah, Wool Monte was awesome, wasn't it? Uh, being in Caffilly, wouldn't Wonderwool in Wales be closer to you? Have you seen Wonderwool, Gina? Wonderwool is great. I really enjoyed that one because my view was just sheep and hillside from the hotel. Right, so. Um, oh, I didn't bring my starter set box in. I was going to show you what was in the starter set. No, um, didn't bring the start set box in, but um, I can look it up quickly. Sorry. 
so in the starter set you get um Oh, the starter set is on special offer. It's reduced. Wow. I didn't know that was a special offer. Huh. Right. Starter set, you get six colours. And you get... Where's the colour list? They're really good colours. You can colour mix with them, so they're really, really good colours. So, um, you get Scarlet. Pretty much the ones I'm using today, actually. Uh, you get your Procyon Fixer, you get Manutex, which is a thickener, and we'll be using that in a later video to show you how to thicken your dye up and paint with it. You get salt, which you need, and urea that you need if... Hi, Bev! Hi, Kim. Uh, you get urea, which you need if um, you've got really really hard water uh, we're blessed here because our water doesn't have any lime scale on it and it is really soft so we're really really lucky really lucky right so uh you get ultramarine oh hang on i've got my gloves on Yeah, last weekend, Wonderwall, we're missing it. Bev would have been there. You all know Bev. She's come into the group. Bev's knitting for fun. So anyone that goes to any of the wool shows will know Bev. And Kim, you'll know from Crafty Roo. She's in the group. Say hi, Kim. She's got um, doing a brush -o show. Is it today that you're doing brush -o, Kim? Or is it tomorrow you're doing brush -o? I can't remember. Thursday you do brush out, I think, isn't it? I'm usually there, usually being cheeky. Right, gloves on, we're using dye. So, in the starter set, you get ultramarine, which is beautiful blue. Scarlet. Vivid lemon. I write mine on my boxes. Uh, for the darker ones, it doesn't really show up, so I need to get myself a silver sharpie or a gold sharpie. Uh, turquoise. Um, magenta. And there's one more. You actually get six, but I can't put my finger on which is the sixth one. I don't usually use the starter set. I should know. I should have looked it up, but... I've got some extra ones today. Because I found these in my storage box when I was Welcher. I've got Autumn Leaf, which is a gorgeous autumn brownie leaf colour. And I found my black. And Lavender and Peach. So this is going to be quite an interesting mix of tie-dye in today. <laughs> A very interesting mix so when you start working with your dye you can see that one's black I don't need to write it on it's the black is black peach is gonna be so cool I'm very excited for peach I've never used peach that's been uh, one that I've never got my hands on before so when you're mixing up dye always always wear gloves always it is Procyon dye, which is a protein, and it is a protein-based dye. You don't want to get this on your skin. There's pretty much, that's that's all there is to it. You, you don't want to get this on your skin. Um, I do see people using, like, barrier cream. Hi, Helen. 
one of our design team is in. Helen is a fantastic dyer as well. So she's got loads of tutorials on Face on the um, blog. And if you go back on the Facebook page, you'll see loads of tutorials from her. She's great. Um, Uh, it might be golden yellow that I'm missing. That might be the one, Gina. I think it's golden yellow. Um, always wear gloves. Always wear gloves because it is a protein and it is a protein based dye. That's why it's called Procyon dye. And if this goes onto your skin, it can cause a reaction. So 100% just wear gloves. It makes the whole process really easier. I do see other people use barrier cream like this. If you are happy with using barrier cream, please use barrier cream. Um, but whatever you do, don't just have it on bare skin. Just, just no, always wear gloves. Um, I tend to use barrier cream when I'm at shows and I only use it when I'm doing brush -over. Mainly because, as you all know, if you use brush -over, <laughs> that by the end of the day, your hands are pretty much black. <laughs> uh, and it doesn't look very good the next day when you're demoing. So, Barrier cream it is, but I don't use barrier cream with dye. Sometimes I'll put it up my arms just to make sure, but I'm, I've got my arms covered today, kind of covered. So I'm just wearing the gloves. When you're mixing the dye up, please use a mask as well. Any kind of a cloth mask. Once it's mixed, then that's fine. But we recommend you to use a mask when you're dealing with the dye in powder form simple as that it's just common sense basically it's not um you know it is just it's just common sense it's 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 a powder so you'd use a mask it's uh, that simple um it's a liquid so you wear gloves that's all and don't let your animals near it my cats have all gone so they've finished climbing up the fish tank and being annoying because i think uh my partner went and fed them the only way to get rid of them i think they know that that's the only way to get rid of them so they do it more often now right mixing up your dye on your full instructions uh oh now on your full instructions on your big instructions Um, here, if you want a really, really light pastel shade of dye, you will go for just one to three grams of dye. If you want a dark shade of dye, then you'd go for five grams of dye. A medium shade is about three grams of dye. Now, I've gone for a, um, because I'm making a reusable bag and it's for me, I've gone for a pale to medium shade. So I've used two and a half grams of dye in all of these. So two and a half gram solution is uh, roughly about a half of a teaspoon of dye. I had to look it all up because I just, I just, I know what it is. So I, can't, I just spoon it in and I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Helen will agree with me as well. <laughs> when she's dying, you, you don't weigh it because you just know. So I had to look all of this up. It was quite funny. I was panicking this morning because I couldn't find my sheet. And then I found it in the bottom of a box. So if you want a pastel shade, one to three grams if you want a medium shade three to four grams if you want a deep shade five the only exception to that rule is black and if you want a really really nice really jet dark black i just double it i always double it that's that's my go-to you could use less i'm probably doing overkill but with black i like it to be really 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 jet black and if you have cotton jeans that are black and the proper cotton denim jeans, um, you can, and they lose their color really quickly, you can actually follow the method and do a dye bath and uh, dye your jeans black again. So there is that option. You can with the blue as well, or buy white jeans and tie dye them. Oh, that might be a project. I wonder if I could find any white jeans. 
I shall be looking to later. So I've mixed with um, these ones are 100 150 ml bottles, I think. And these ones are 500 ml bottles. So I just roughly mixed up. I put um, two and a half grams in these big ones. And I put half of that in the little ones, but two and a half grams for the black because it's double. And then I've mixed that up with, um, I should have brought my jug in. Is it 100 ml of water? Yep. Yep. So these ones are roughly about one and a half gram in 100 ml. And these ones are about two and a half to three grams in 300 ml. But basically, the darker you want it, the more dye you put in. The lighter you want it, the less dye you put in. Don't ever go below one gram because it's not going to really come out at all, especially if you use a polycotton mix. Right, let's get on to the actual dyeing. So what I did was I put lukewarm water in and I put my dye in, I put my lid on and I've given it a good shake. And these are brand new bottles, so I haven't even cut the top off yet. And I love cutting the tops off new bottles. Any colour preference for anybody? So we've got autumn leaf, lavender, peach, magenta. Could go for the blues, the ultramarine and the turquoise. I'm thinking the turquoise and the lavender on one might be beautiful. Because blue and purple is really nice. Could even go with a bit of um, magenta or scarlet on that one. So many possibilities. Because I've got four extra colours I don't usually have. I don't know. I've got all excited. Turquoise, magenta. Yep. Right, I'm just going to move my dye to the side. Remember, at this point, it is gloves on and it's gloves on forever. Now, I hope this isn't going to send my colour on my camera crazy because this is bright green. If it does, I'm going to fill it with white paper. But what I'm using is a tray, and this is a cat litter tray uh, that's fine it is a deep cat litter tray and this way I do all of my dyeing in my tray and if you do a dye workshop with me this is what will be at the workshop they, I have a, several of these trays and they will all be lined up and what we do is we dye in the tray we don't dye out of the tray that way it's all contained there's no accidents there's no spills and cover your work surface this work surface i'm on is a um, teflon mat and on top of a kitchen work surface uh, like a melamine surface and this is in um, a room that i don't really care so if it actually gets dye on it and it stains it i don't really care because it's in my crafty room it's it's not gonna ever see the light of day I'll see anybody nice anyway. Posh people ain't going to see this desk, that's for sure. <laughs> the, the next thing that I need to have ready is some plastic bags. So I have handily got a stash of plastic bags from a well-known uh, Swedish shop because these have a really nice zip tie and reusable and they're a good size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dye it, I'm going to chuck it in the bag, and then I'm going to seal it. And then this bag is going to be left, oh there's a bit of dye in this bag, I should have washed them out first. I do reuse the bags, it'll be right. I guess we're doing magenta on this one. <laughs> and these these bags I do reuse them so once we have dyed and we're all bagged up what we're going to do is leave these bags overnight 
and tomorrow I will be back at 11 a.m. and what we will be doing is opening them and washing them out and seeing what they look like and I'll have a lot more because obviously off camera I'm going to be doing the whole lot and that is the essence of tie-dyeing it is that simple and people tell me all the time that they're too scared of dyeing it is so easy so easy just open a couple more of these bags i like to keep mine separate when i'm doing separate colors so let's do this one and we got um, turquoise and magenta and peach sounds like a good combination to me so I was thinking of doing um, turquoise in the middle and then magenta on the ends so hopefully if I've tied these elastic bands right that'll stay white so turquoise and magenta or should we do magenta in the middle and turquoise on the end these blue gloves it's sending it crazy i'll have to find some white gloves tomorrow or some black gloves have i got white gloves here actually i wonder if i've got some clear gloves in my resin kit just a second i do aha let's change gloves because the blue ones are sending it mad sorry just a second I don't usually use these clear gloves because they make my um, hands really sweaty. I don't know what it is about them. So, right, I'm going to give my bottle a shake. I have already mixed up the dye this morning. Once you've mixed your dye up in a bottle, it'll last a good two, three weeks. So I don't think that you have to use it all at once. It'll be perfectly fine. It only starts to react when it hits the soda ash. You can put your soda ash in here, but it takes your working time down to sometimes only even half an hour. So what you want to do is treat your fabric. Makes it just so much easier. Now, careful taking your lids off. And I'm going to do turquoise and I'm just going to dribble that on lid on and then magenta Is it that is quite literally it people tell me that they're scared of dying and um, we've just done it it is that simple I I just I can't employ you enough to just try it just just get some and try because it's so much fun so much fun so there we go, let it soak in a minute and then into the bag seal it up and we leave that filter for tomorrow can you believe it? how simple is that? it is a tie-dye sort of day Um, this is my rag cloth that gets washed occasionally. Sometimes the dye comes out, sometimes it doesn't, but I just use it as a wipe up instead of using baby wipes or tissues because then and it, you can see it's got Angelina on it from my last project. Angelina gets everywhere. Um, while I'm doing the others, I would like to know what, once I've finished doing the dye in the tie dye bag, what do you want me to use next in my next video? because we've got fabric paints we've got of course brusher we've got the brusher sprays which is an acrylic based permanent spray 
we've got all sorts of products we've got paints acrylic paints fabric paints every kind of paint you can shake a stick at um and we make it all handmade in sheffield so what do you want me to use it's um it's completely up to you the world is is your oyster so I'm going to do one of the spirals now and I'm going to use autumn leaf I'm going to put autumn leaf in this corner I'm putting quite a lot on so I don't think this spiral is going to have much white in it um, so I'm going to do autumn leaf I'm going to do peach Oh, don't you just love brand new bottles and brand new supplies? This peach is going to be lovely. Um, do we want to try black with that? No, I don't think so. Autumn leaf and peach. Kind of two nice colours. Yeah, that's the thing, Helen, isn't it? it's so simple apart from it's so hard not to mess with it because once you've done this bit you just have to leave it and go away and come back tomorrow you could leave it just for four hours but i highly recommend leaving it overnight because you get better color saturation i think i'm going to go with the lemon i did a very light concentration on the lemon so this is going to be a very subtle lemon lemon is one of my favorites i love the lemon because you can mix the lemon with other colors and get some really really nice saturation uh, let's get another bag so this one was the autumn leaf the peach and the lemon but what i tend to do with my bags uh, of dye when I've dyed and I've finished dyeing um, what I, I tend to do is I put them in a drawer in a dark place and not a warm place because we don't really want it to dry it does need to stay damp so if you just put it in um, a cool d dark place then it doesn't dry as quickly and I do find I don't know why but I do find that maybe it's um, subliminal but I do think that I get a better color from doing it that way So this was the one that we randomly tied little lumps in. So this one, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it out and I'm going to try and get the little knob, nodules a different colour and then white and then all the bottom can be multicoloured. What do you think for this one? I'm thinking that maybe black around the outside and the little nodules maybe a different colour each. I don't know if it's terrible we can just dye the whole thing black over and then jobs are good in um so there's no real wastage i'm thinking maybe lavender because i haven't tried the lavender one yet maybe lavender and black that sounds like a nice combination yeah black and lavender allison got it great minds think alike eh oh I cut the lid off this one before I shook it. So let's go lavender on top. I mean, at the end of the day with dyeing, there, there's no wrong. It's tie dyeing especially. Just, you know, blob it on. This one's quite a big nodule, so I'm going to add a little bit more dye under there. It's trial and error, and the best thing to use really is an old bedsheet. Just a cut-up bedsheet. That's what this is. It is a cut-up bedsheet. So, where's the black? Right, I'm going to be careful with the black. Make a good shape there. Oh, 
it must be lunchtime. That's not Sunday. That's my tummy. And then let's get some nice black around the edge, and that will cover up that magenta that we spilled on it. I do see a lot of people when they're doing tie dye, they don't really measure and weigh, they just guesstimate it. And there's nothing wrong with that. So if you're not very good at measuring and weighing and and you know calculating, don't worry about it. You'll do it, and if it doesn't come out very well, then you'll go, oh well, next time I need to add more. And you can always dye over it. So if it does go wrong, don't panic. Just don't panic. There is no wrong in crafting, so long as you're safe and you wear your gloves. Although I do need to be careful getting this one in here because I don't want the black to touch that nice lavender. So I'm just going to carefully make sure my little nodules are still sticking up i should really have done five and done an odd number but never mind this one i'm going to put straight on my tray behind me i have a tray um it's a trolley from uh, you can get them from ikea from hobbycraft and it's like a three tier trolley and i keep one that i keep all of my dye stuff in and that way it doesn't contaminate anything else so i'm just going to put this straight into my trolley because i want this to stay upright like this i don't want it to get squashed because i don't want that lavender to touch the black but the other ones don't really matter because they're all screwed up and tied up get the black out the bottom I mean, you could soak up all the bits out of the bottom with different with other fabric, but or paper. So there's no wastage unless you want to make wastage. So next colours, um, we haven't used scarlet yet. Should we go for scarlet? And ultramarine maybe. Uh, does anybody want block printing because i've got some beautiful blocks and we can do some block printing i think i'm going to do scarlet on the bottom edges and you'll notice that i am doing both sides when i'm putting the dye on Whoop. got a blob up there i guess we're not leaving that one white um what about peach scarlet and peach wonder how that will turn out Let's try it and see. And because you can you see where it blobbed over? I don't know because this green, I'm, I'm going to have to put some white in it for the next one. Um, as I'm putting more on, it is diluting out the scarlet. So if you do what I did then and just blobbed it on by accident, don't worry about it too much. So that one's scarlet and peach. Uh, running out of bags, so what I'm going to do is open this one up and put it in the other side. That's fine. The long one I can put in there as well. And clear that up. So have I hopefully taken away any fear that anybody has got about tie-dyeing because uh, this one I think I'm gonna do lavender and magenta and um, ultramarine I think. Ooh turquoise and ultramarine. I bet turquoise and ultramarine will come out nice. I love the ultramarine it's very dark the contrast between the dark and the light is going to be great 
So I'm going to do two sides turquoise, two sides ultramarine, I think. So the ultramarine. I made way too much dye today. I think I was getting ready for a class. And cleanup is really, really simple. What you want to do is your soda ash can just go down the drain. It is a washing soda type crystal. It is safe to be disposed of just down your drain. I'm using a fixative, Debbie. Yes, I am using soda ash, which is a Procyon dye fixer. And the fabric is pre-soaked in soda ash. Uh, you can either send me a message after or if you go back to the beginning, I spend the first 20 minutes talking about Procyon Dye and Fixative. So up to you. You can ask me or watch the video from the beginning once we're done. But it's really simple. And soda ash is not harmful to the environment or anything. So you don't need to be too worried about using it. I know a lot of people are worried about chemicals. So... Just, you know, don't be too worried. Oh, so glad you're enjoying yourself, Alison. Right, last one that I've got to do live. So I'm thinking this one is going to be the one like we've got on our flags. Um, the flags are absolutely beautiful and the lady that did them is absolutely amazing. Um, but I can't remember the name off the top of my head but she is like the dye guru. She is absolutely just, her talent is, I mean, she's been doing it for a long time. So her talent is well-earned and she's well-respected as well. And they're just absolutely beautiful. Um, she did quite a lot of the samples that we have. If you come to Knitting and Stitch and you've seen the dyed quilt with velvet because you can dye velvet as well as uh, she did that one that's usually behind the till it's absolutely gorgeous um she did several colors on the flags because the flags are massive they're like six foot high seven foot high something like that so this one is going to be a very 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 shorter version <laughs> very much shorter version um i think i want to do peach and um, autumn leaf maybe start off with the yellow going into the peach into the autumn leaf what do you think or maybe ending at the autumn leaf and starting with the yellow and then the peach in the middle mm. any suggestions I'm really feeling the peach and the autumn leaf today though let's do it let's end in the lemon and start in the autumn so we're going darker out to lighter so this was the one that we we gathered and then we folded it in half and then we tied it really tightly here and really tightly here that's that one yeah let's do it so i'm gonna go autumn leaf that beautiful autumn brown And then I think I'm going to have to go and feed the cats because I can hear trouble who's on his way back. So this one's a peach. And then we're going to go into, oh, I can give myself enough room, the lemon. And now I had a bit of the autumn leaf here, if you can see. 
so what i'm going to do is if i just put more lemon on it that disperses it so don't worry if you get finger marks and stuff in other places you can get rid of it don't worry about it don't sweat it it's tie-dye it's supposed to be all a bit mismatched and a bit funky so there we have it now that's it uh, really simple i've got lots more to do this afternoon so i am going to have a lovely play this afternoon and i'm going to do the rest and what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave all of these overnight and i am going to be back tomorrow same time same place 11 a.m and we will unwrap all of these we will give them a rinse out and i will tell you the next part of the instruction and then next week um i haven't worked out which days i can stream next week but it will always be at 11 a.m when i do we will be having the reveal of the washed and dried and completely finished pieces and then we're going to sew them together and make a reusable shopping bag so the squares that i did the big squares are going to be turned into a square bag and they are roughly i did um i cut them out at 11 inch square the strips um i did at about five inches wide and i i got the 150 centimeter wide cotton from the fab works so i just cut that in half so what's that in inches i don't know i'm hungry and i need a coffee um so it was 150 wide fabric and i cut it into five inches that way so and then i cut it in half so that's 75 centimeters there you go 75 centimeters long what's that in inches i don't know does anybody else get confused working in centimeters and inches <laughs> So come back tomorrow, 11 a.m. We will open all these and make sure you leave me your requests at what you want me to show you next because I have most of it here. I don't have acid dye, so I can't show you dyeing wool. That's the only thing that I can't show you dyeing, um, but I can show you everything else that we've got and that we do because I do have it here. So thank you all for joining me and I will see you tomorrow and I'll make sure the cats don't try and get in my fish tank while I'm live on air this time. Bye.